Hi, I'm Buriana and you're watching Art Unplugged. This video is the second of our videos on the subject of the art market. This time we'll talk about NFTs, the latest big thing that everybody is talking about. NFTs are not something new. They have been around since 2014 and they were first associated with digital art. Presently, Wikipedia lists 14 uses of NFT. The first time ever that I heard of NFT was earlier this year when this NFT work sold at auction for $69.3 million. The story was in the headlines and the feeling I was left with was that there are people with more money than brains. The work in question is essentially a JPEG file that can be endlessly reproduced. So somebody paid over $69 million not even for a printout signed by the artist or anything visible or tangible. He paid it for code, something that he cannot see and admire and whatever satisfaction he might get from it, it is not coming from the aesthetics of the artwork. But in 2021, the market for NFT art grew from 52 million at the beginning of the year to 490 million by the end of April. This is more than 800% growth. By October, total sales of NFT art had reached $3.5 billion and NFTs accounted for one third of all online sales of art. The big auction houses quickly took an interest in NFT art. Sotheby's even launched its own NFT marketplace. Something is clearly going on here. So let's see what it is. I can use a computer. But when it comes to navigating the cyberspace, consider me your grandma. So I ask the household millennial here to explain it to me. What on earth is an NFT? NFT is an abbreviation of non-fungible token. Non-fungible is a fancy term for non-replaceable. For example, a dollar is fungible. Trade one for another dollar and you'll have exactly the same thing. However, an original Picasso, for example, is non-fungible. If you traded it for a different Picasso, you'd have something completely different. You gave up a weeping woman and got an old guitarist. The token is generated digitally and is secured by the blockchain, the parallel universe of cryptocurrencies which everybody knows about but almost nobody can explain. So, is this non-fungible token something like a passport number? It is not the person, but something that represents them, right? Sort of. The most important aspect of it is that it's unique. An NFT can only have one official owner at a time. It's also impossible to forge, which is not the case with passports. So how exactly do these NFTs work? NFTs are part of the cryptocurrency blockchains like Ethereum, Binance and many others. But they work differently from a cryptocurrency. Each NFT contains vital information that makes it unique and unexchangeable that's recorded in a smart contract. And what is a smart contract? Smart contracts are simply programs that ensure that certain predetermined conditions are met automatically so that all participants can be immediately certain of the outcome without the need of an intermediary. For example, if we create a token for a given artwork, we can stipulate that a fixed percentage of the sales revenue goes to the artist and some percentage is donated to a charity. Isn't it easy enough to do this without the use of a smart contract? Yes, it is, but it's much harder, bordering on impossible, to ensure that every time the work is resold, this continues to happen. NFTs offer fixed terms that guarantee funds are distributed among all parties for the lifetime of the token itself. Well, this sounds good to me. As you know, artists at present get very little, if anything, from the resale of their work. So can I jump on the bandwagon with my paintings then? Or is NFT possible only for digital artwork? No, you can have an NFT for a physical artwork that has been scanned or otherwise transformed into a digital image. 
So I guess you can have an NFT for a sculpture or a performance if it is filmed. That's right. You can have an NFT for anything that can be owned. There are NFTs for songs and filmed footage. Okay, so how do I go about creating an NFT of my work? Once you have your artwork in digital format, you need to choose the blockchain that you want to use and set up an account. The most popular are Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain, but there are many others. Then you go through the process of setting up a digital wallet, uploading your work and creating your NFT. There are tutorials on the internet about how to do it, but bear in mind that minting an NFT can be an expensive process. Why? Generally, there are charges for minting, that is creating the NFT, another charge for listing it, and then a charge called a gas fee for selling it. These fees vary from one exchange to another, but you could expect a charge of between $100 and $150 per work on the more popular exchanges. Also, these charges are paid in cryptocurrency, so you will first need to set up an account and buy some coins, usually Ether or Bitcoin. Are NFTs restricted to modern digital creations only? Not at all. The State Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, Russia, announced that it will sell a series of NFTs based on some masterpieces in their collection. The Uffizi Gallery in Florence, Italy sold its first NFT of Michelangelo's Doni Tondo to support operations after revenue from museum goers dropped due to the Covid pandemic. Now the museum plans to make more based on other pieces from their collection. And of course, when the smell of big bucks is in the air, the first to join the party is Damien Hirst. In July this year, he launched his mega NFT project, The Currency. It comprises 10,000 A4 sized pieces of handmade paper covered in colored spots. The back of each is numbered and signed by the artist with an arty title. Like actual contemporary banknotes, each also has a watermark, a micro dot, and a hologram to make it hard to forge. Each painting has a corresponding NFT, which was offered for sale at the start of the project for $2,000 each. If a buyer wants the physical artwork, they must choose by July 21, 2022 to trade in their token. If they do so, the token will be destroyed. If they decide to keep the token, the artwork will be destroyed. They cannot have both. The sale of all 10,000 works is worth 20 million US dollars. A month following the launch of the project, there were already about 2,000 resales, and the total market value of the project was estimated at approximately 500 million. The highest price paid so far for one of these NFTs has been $120,000, and they're still in circulation. Meanwhile, I wonder what is Hearst's percentage of the resale value fixed in the smart contract of the NFTs. Ah, the things we do for the love of art. The peer blurbs about the project call it an interesting experiment in the irrational economics of collectibles and blockchain technology. Hats off for the clever money-making scheme. As for the anticipated revelations and insights, I don't see here anything that a sociological survey cannot deliver much better. And I'm still waiting for somebody to enlighten me about the artistic merit of all this. Anyone? Let me know in the comments below. In conclusion, when you shell a few millions on an NFT artwork, you become the proud owner of a digital certificate of mm, itself. If you want to impress your guests with your expensive acquisition, you should make a printout of the artwork, which you do not own. What you own are electric impulses ticking somewhere in some supercomputer and contributing to global warming. Seriously, I don't get it. The world is changing rapidly, and it's mostly the younger generations who drive that change. The expansion of the virtual world is part of it. Young people everywhere have a different perception of what is real. For them, a game in cyberspace is as real as a football match at Old Trafford, which you'd probably watch on a screen anyway. Nowadays, you can play against opponents at the other side of the world, 
You can have cyber sex as an avatar, you can own property and buy and sell real estate that only exists in cyberspace. NFTs also only exist in cyberspace, but each NFT is unique, so if you own it, you can prove that you are the only person in the world who owns that token. And in this modern world, that has a value. It's virtually real. I must say that at the beginning of my work on this topic, I was very skeptical about the whole NFT thing, just as I am about cryptocurrency. Essentially, NFT technology opens a parallel marketplace for art, which certainly will overtake the traditional one in volume. This will lead to a manifold increase in the overall investment in art. There will be more speculation and more bursting bubbles. But there are some good things too. NFT technology allows to attribute uniqueness to digital art, which is otherwise endlessly reproducible. And this should be good news for digital artists. Second, it makes it theoretically possible for artists to sell their physical artworks twice. Once as a physical artwork and again as NFT and be rewarded for the resale value of their work. Last but not least, by selling NFTs of their collections, museums can raise money for their own upkeep and expansion. And this is a good thing for the society as a whole. NFT is definitely an interesting space to watch. Will it make the world a better place? Remains to be seen. Global warming permitting. I hope you like this video. Is NFT a little bit clearer to you now? Please let me know in the comments below. Please hit the like button, share and subscribe. If you're interested in my work as an artist, you can find me on social media. All the links are in the description below. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you very soon. Bye.